Alright, eight watercolor techniques that we're gonna do today. And so I have all my supplies out ready to go. I transferred my different technique things onto watercolor paper and then I took some, just some blue painters tape and I taped it down to a board so it doesn't warp on me. And then uh, just a couple of things about the paintbrush that we're gonna be using. So this is a really nice paintbrush that I bought at Hobby Lobby and a couple of years ago they were like around eight to nine dollars. They're probably more expensive than that. Um, they are my absolute favorite paintbrush to use. The reason being is that it'll hold a lot of water but you can also get a really nice fine tip and the fine point is very important because I want you guys to learn how to control the paintbrush and so the amount of pressure that you put down on it will then change how thick or thin the line is that you are going to create. So to start with, what I want you guys to do is paint the eight watercolor techniques across the top. And I went ahead and I already put some water into my paint palette here. And it's just like, you know, the Crayola or Prang watercolors, just the cheap things, but they will work just fine for us. So again, it's a very light, very light um, pressure that you need to put down and I'm gonna grab a little bit more pigment because I want you to see this on the video okay so again a very very light touch as you press down and you can keep changing colors But the harder you push down, the bigger that um, mark is going to become, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch down to the rubbing alcohol step. And I'm gonna go ahead and in order to make this one show up, here's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And I'm gonna put quite a bit of pigment down on that paper surface. So I'm just gonna paint that in there. If you paint outside your rectangles, that's okay. Not a big deal. I'm gonna quickly paint that on there. Grab a little more pigment. Maybe plop some purple in there. And something funky is happening to my paper here, but I hope that ends up being okay. I'm gonna grab some pigment. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do with the rubbing alcohol, it's just plain old rubbing alcohol. Bought it at Walmart. I'm gonna tip that Q-tip right into my rubbing alcohol and then I'm gonna press it onto the paper and you can see that, that it kind of starts to remove that color. You might not be able to see it very well on camera but when it completely dries, it'll show up a lot more like that one. And then let's move on to the wet to wet technique. So what you're gonna do for that one is you're gonna start with clean water and paint down the surface with just clean water. And then you're gonna take some color and you're just gonna drop it in and you're gonna see it kind of start to spread out on that wet surface and let's grab some blue okay so the wet to wet surface technique you're kind of just blotting in colors and then they'll bleed together okay I'm gonna clean out my paintbrush now if you need to you can always dab your paintbrush on a paper towel okay please don't ever take that paper towel and pull and try to dry your bristles that way it's really really hard on the paintbrush you're going to end up ruining it okay so dab 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 okay all right let's move to the transparency square and so let's start with oh let's start with blue i'm just gonna paint a line of blue I'm going to clean my paintbrush again. Let's grab, let's grab some red. And 
And then basically I'm going to take some yellow, so I'm just using three primary colors, and I'm going to start there and I'm going to paint out. And you can see where they overlapped that, um, whoops, dropped my paintbrush. Um, where they overlapped, it actually creates a new color. Therefore, the watercolors are transparent, so you need to be aware of that. Okay, so let's jump back up here to this salt one. Okay, um, we're going to get this to work here. We're going to put down some paint. And you got to work quick with this one, okay? Got to work fast. In order to get this salt to work, um, you got to drop that salt on there while your paper is still shiny wet, okay? So here I have some salt and I'm just going to put it on my finger and then I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it on there, okay? It won't show up until after it dries, okay? But on this one here, you can see these little white speckles here. That's where the salt actually landed on the paper. So as it dries, it kind of repels the paint. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. And I clean out my paintbrush. And I'm gonna do the plastic wrap one. So the thing I like about the plastic wrap is that when it dries and we pull off the plastic wrap, it, it might end up looking kind of like crystals or frost or something like that, ice crystals. So again, you need to work fast with it. You don't want your paint to dry before you put your plastic wrap on there. So I've got my plastic wrap handy and you're probably going to want something else to kind of hold this down because as you release it, that plastic wrap kind of relaxes. So I've got that I'm going to um, put down as a weight, but you can use whatever you have handy. Um, let's use, I think I'm kind of fond of purples and blues today. So I'm going to put that on there. I think I'm going to add a little bit more water. That was pretty intense. Spread that around on there. Yeah, a little more purple. Okay. Now, take my saran wrap. I'm going to kind of crinkle it up. And I'm going to place it on there like so. And then I'm going to put my little weights on there. I don't want to lift this up until it's completely dry. All right. Moving along to the crayon resist. So what I did not tell you ahead of time is that I took a white crayon and I drew a little design in there. And so when I paint over the top of it, that crayon is going to repel the water color and then um, it'll show up. So I'm going to paint down some blue and I drew on some like snowflakes. So I just thought blue would look pretty there with that to get those to show up. Now if your design in the wax crayon doesn't show up very well, uh, you just didn't push hard enough with your wax crayon. And all right, so the permanent marker one, I went ahead and drew a design up in permanent marker. And so what I would like you to do is just paint right inside, learn to control to paint inside specific shapes. So I'm just gonna paint this little star diamond thing. And then I think I'll start with the tip of that. I don't know, I kind of thought that it might look like shooting stars. You can draw whatever you want. I'm going to do something like that. Maybe I'll grab some orange here and paint it up that way and let those two kind of blend together. Okay, so this one I'm going to allow it to totally dry and then I'm going to come back and paint that background surface. So I'll just show you here real quick. This is my style. This is what I like to do. I personally really, really like that white outline kind of around it. It just helps the image pop a little bit more. That's just my style. It doesn't mean it's right. doesn't mean it's wrong. That's just what I like to do. You don't have to do it that way. All right, we're going to move on to the bubble wrap. I love the bubble wrap. So resist the temptation of popping the bubbles, you guys, okay? Otherwise, you won't have anything show up. Okay. So I'm going to paint down some red. You can choose whatever color you guys want. I'm going to go with some orange on this side. Again, you got to work fast. Okay. We got to work fast so that this shows up. 
think I'll grab a little more red, make that pretty intense. Okay. And then you need to make sure that you'll, your bubbles are actually facing down onto that paint. And press that into place. Okay. So this is another one of those that are really going to show up tomorrow or after it's dried. You're going to see how the paint pulls right up to those bubbles. Okay. So again, we have to let it dry. And now we're going to move on to the cheesecloth. So for the cheesecloth, I'm going to paint down a really light color. And so I'm going to grab green. I think I'll go with green. So I'm going to paint a really light wash of green first. That'll kind of fill in my background. Okay, then I'm going to take this cheesecloth and before I lay it down on there, um, I'm going to kind of pull it apart and separate those little squares so they're not just all the same spacing. And there we go. Kind of give it a slight little tug. I'm going to lay that down on top of my little rectangle. So here's a possibility of what it could end up looking like okay so I did like this really cool wet to wet technique in the background really faint and then I laid down this really big piece of cheesecloth okay and now that's where I'm at here is I would grab a darker color and I'm gonna paint right on top of that cheesecloth so you can see that that color is following the cheesecloth and kind of collecting next to the fibers of the cheesecloth. Okay, and let's see, need a little more water there. And okay, there we go. So as that dries on this one, um, the gold that you see in there. I actually took a can of metallic gold spray paint and just lightly misted it over the top of the cheesecloth and then removed it after it was dried. So it gave this really cool effect. And I love that. And I also use the salt technique out here. So what I would do with this, I have no idea, but I actually think it's very, very beautiful by itself. And um, oh, you can kind of start to see some of those showing up there. And like I said, my alcohol, um, rubbing alcohol one will show up more like this once it dries. And again, when this dries more, I will come back and paint that background.